Holy f- I have one thing to say to you all. That's big thank you. Thank you so much for watching this video in the first place, giving me the time of day. The love and feedback that I received on it has been mind blowing to me and, and I'm so grateful for all of it. So what we're gonna do is break it down, talk about how I shot this based on questions that you asked. There's a lot of questions that I wanna cover, so we're gonna like, <sighs> if you haven't seen the actual video yet, maybe watch that first. It was the last video I posted. It would make a lot more sense to watch that before this video. Gear, production, story, edit, lighting. Uh, let's do gear first because it's the easiest and I wanna get it out of the way first because it's like my least favorite one to talk about. Diego as hi Danny. All with the 24 to 70. Yes, all this was shot with the Sony 24 to 70 on the Sony FX3 with an eighth of black pro mist filtered onto the front. There was one shot that I used the Sony 20 millimeter, which was the shot inside of the trash can where the camera is looking up at our character Marley. Curious how you did the car shot. Um, so, I'm not recommending any car shot products. But I use this. It's Cam Ripper, Cam Tree Gripper. This is a very inexpensive product for the risks that you're putting into a shot like that. So I will not recommend this, but it did work. And I'll probably use it again. Next question is from Christopher. How do you record sound? Not all stock or library stuff, right? A lot of it is stock or library stuff that I get from different resources all over the internet. A library that I've built up just over the years of, of shooting films, I've just kept all the sounds and categorized them. So every time I go into a new project, I have that entire list. I also make a lot of my own sound effects using this mic that I'm recording the audio for this right now. If I'm transitioning to another scene, I'll go Just like make a bunch of sounds with my voice and I drown in reverb and manipulate it a little bit in post-production. Most of the sounds throughout this entire video were actually me, Marley getting hit in the stomach by the ball. That <clears throat> sound was me making that sound. It wasn't actually Marley. Question from, I hope I'm saying this right, Jord? Jord West? Since you shot on the Sony 2470, how did you manage to get those sick flares from the baseball lights? Is it just the lens? I honestly don't know. It might be from the lens plus the filtration. I just want everyone, everyone to know I'm not like a gear aficionado. I don't know everything about gear. Sometimes little happy accidents like that happen and I take credit for it. And a bunch of people asked me what those tube lights were that was filming in uh, in a lot of the scenes and those were these like lightsaber looking things. Nan lights, I mean these, these are Pavo tubes or something? I don't know. I'll link them in the description you can check them out. They come in handy because they're battery powered. Uh, that's good on gear. Let's move on to production. Talking about logistical side of things. How do you go about getting permission to shoot in locations like the store and the baseball field? It's very difficult. I'm not from Maui. Don't look local. So getting locations is particularly hard for me here. It's not like back home in Philly where I know a ton of people have a huge network. Getting the baseball field was really hard because the only fields with baseball lights that I could find were run by the county and people at the county in Maui don't want to deal with filmmakers, people like me. So what we did was we had to reach out to a location manager, someone who knows the film production industry on Maui super well and has been a part of it and knows a ton of people in that area. Hana Productions, Guy Pierce, he managed the, the permitting, uh, getting and locking down the baseball field that fit our needs. He dealt with the, the donation that we gave to the school that we ended up shooting at. Then with the general store that we shot at, my intern uh, is actually born and raised here on Maui, and so is his family and his family's fam family friends with the people who own that general store. So that was kind of our in, we paid them and they let us come in for a couple hours. Christian, uh, how do you get funding for something like this? So I'm sort of in a very unique position that most of you probably wouldn't be able to relate to. I have a YouTube channel with a great uh, audience base. The brands that I use to produce these videos are brands I'm reaching out to and asking, hey, uh, I have this concept, I'm building a portfolio, full spec projects for a production company that I'm trying to get off the ground. Would you like to fund uh, one of those projects? And then I'll introduce your brand to my audience. This series, this film in particular, was all funded by Musicbed. Easy decision. I was gonna use Musicbed music anyway. It's 
what I believe is the best quality music that you can find for your videos. It's like songs that you would actually hear on the radio, that music that has found the curated and made available for you to use in your videos. Did you shoot this by yourself? You got a lot of things going on, multiple locations, young actor, production design, costumes. Yeah, I did a lot of it by myself, but I also had help from Santana, my intern, who also just started a YouTube channel, so check him out. I'll link that here. We use Santana's pretty much whole family, his house, his brother, his connections to get the general store. He shot the BTS, so he was a huge help. I did everything else. <laughs> Question from Jeff, what was your budget and total number of shoot days? Four shoot days, I don't know if you can see this, but this is a breakdown of the production, more or less, if you wanna hit pause. Check that out. Here's the total I spent on it. Well worth it. How do you pull this off pretty much on your own? All right, number one, don't do it alone. Have at least one other person help you at least on the production side of things, which was Santana. Number two, plan as much as you possibly and physically can. Even down to the game he was playing, I edited a clip inside of Adobe Premiere where I took an old baseball game, add my own text, said you suck on the screen, screen recorded my friends chatting in a group chat, roasting a, a 13 year old, like I put so much planning time and, and mind power into making this work. Number two, create a concept around s things that you have available to you, resources that you have. I was coming out with a spec idea and I thought to myself, what do I have at my disposal? I knew my intern Santana's little brother played baseball and that's what I rolled with and built the story around. And the last tip is just go with the flow. Nothing is gonna be perfect. Nothing is gonna work out exactly how you planned it out to be and you just have to adapt and, and go with the flow. If you had a bigger budget crew, what would that same film look like? I think if I had more budget, the things I would have invested in was making some of the shots a little prettier. The scene of him riding his bicycle away from the shop, I would have cleared out that street, did a wet down, had an overhead light, had someone to stop traffic, maybe shut down the road and make it safer. But the thing about not having a big crew, not having a big budget is you get more creative. So instead of having an opening with him striking out an actual game, I set the scene by having him coming home, dreary, rainy day, looking out the window, looking defeated. So you kind of get the point that, you know, he wasn't in the best of mood. You can allude to the fact that he screwed up the baseball game. So moving in the story, uh, whew, a lot of questions from a mod. Were you meticulous in your shot selection? It was a looser approach to shooting footage. Uh, not loose at all. Very meticulous. There was some shots that shoot up here and there. Here's the storyboard. Everything that you're looking at is exactly how the video unfolded. When we want to shoot each scene, I knew exactly what shots I wanted and had in mind. Occasionally, every now and then, you'd be like, oh, this looks cool. I'll shoot this real quick while we're here. So I'm making this shot by shot. Literally, what I did is I locked myself in my room and I thought about what would happen. I had my main concept of this little kid who did bad in a baseball game, got made fun of, wanted to get better, and then something at the end proves that he did get better. And what little moments in between could happen to get us to that point? And how can I make things transition seamlessly in such a short amount of time? Tell us how you come up with smooth transitions like the cut from inside circle of the hamper to the circle of the pitching machine. Compositionally, we're looking through a circle. And when we transition to the pitching machine, that shape of the circle is still there. There's still the dark edges, and we're still looking at a circle. So it's pretty much a match cut of, of two different things. Another transition that I'm super proud of is I needed uh, to put a halt to this like getting better montage. Sound effects help bleed uh, into the next scene, but the composition, the framing uh, is like almost a perfect match cut of him swinging the baseball bat and him reaching uh, on the shelves to get the sunflower seeds. So here it says match cut Marley to grabbing seeds off the shelves in the convenience store. So this was all planned. Not much of a question, more just like a like a brute force statement. I didn't get the spinning out the jerky thing. It took me a while to understand what he was talking about, but what I think they're referring to is the sunflower seeds. And if you're asking yourself, I don't get it. Like, it didn't make sense to me. It wasn't supposed to make sense. He's a little kid, he does erratic things. 
Like little kids don't do things that make sense. What extreme action could I put in this to, to up the ante, take it to the extreme, make the audience just like feel more immersed and learn more about this character. And that was just a unique little thing. If you don't get something, you don't have to say it out loud. Moving on to the edit portion. This is so good. Lighting the grading, the story, the way you use music for tension. Oh, that's perfect. It's more of a statement. Thank you, Stefan. So the thing I want to pull away from Stefan's little statement here is the music for tension. I can't stress enough how important music is for your production. It is 50% of the experience for the person watching. You need to spend the same amount of time, if not more, planning out the audio side of the things as you would the actual visuals. If you notice and you rewatch, I'm using music not as just like a background track that you throw into the background. I'm using it to build tension. I'm using it to transition. I'm I'm using it to make the audience member feel exactly the way that I want them to feel in that moment. It's not okay for a piece like this to just have one sterile background track go through the entire piece. It would get boring, it would get stale, it wouldn't make sense for a lot of clips. What I did in the pre-production phase is I went to music bed and I pulled and downloaded all these uh, music background tracks that I could use for my project to use in different phases. I knew I would need uh, music for him getting better phase, which is this song right here that I used. If you listen to the closely the scene in general store, you'll hear the, the music transition into like the music that would be playing over the loudspeaker of a small town general store. <laughs> That's actual music from Music Bed from my favorite section, the vintage section. But I was like, oh, what would be playing over the loudspeakers of a general store in a small town? And I thought, oh, old vintage country song. So I, literally whatever I need to find on Music Bed, I'm able to find it. Use it as background tracks, use it as sound design. Try to have a free account, see if you like it, click it with the link below in my description. And I would love to see a scene where he throws the ball back into the pitching machine. <sighs> nice little comic relief uh, moment. Didn't want it to be all serious. Wanted a little bit of humor in there. Definitely not a VFX guy here. So I had the cadence of this perfectly planned out. I did the actions for Marley. Actually got a bruise on my hip when I landed on my left side because I needed him to land on his left side. So when we transitioned to him on the ground, he's on his left side. This sound design is all fake. Everything you're hearing is fake because I was screaming uh, at Marley the direction, swing, throw, boom. Boom is when he got hit and he would know to get hit in the stomach and fall over to the side. Marley actually just missed the pitching machine uh, to the right of it. If you freeze the frame, you can see the shadow of the ball next to it, which means it's slightly in front of it so it doesn't actually go in. But on your first watch, you know, you, you would never notice. So what I did was then split the screen, put a clip on top of it, and I reversed that one, cropped it over so it wasn't touching Marley. Marley's actions were still the same. Reverse the clip so it looked like the ball was then shooting out of the pitching machine. And then to change the trajectory of uh, the ball, and to make it look like it's coming in and hitting him, I actually downloaded this PNG file of a, a comment off of Google Images. Looked like the stream of a ball. Colored it to look a little warmer. Keyframed it into hitting Marley. It's not perfect. Uh, I listened to it headphones, mixing, panning, transitions. Anyone else knows that the audio is flawless. It's not flawless, but I appreciate it. Like this whole montage of him missing at the pitches, it's all the same swing noise. But if I had the same swing noise just in there untouched the entire time, it would feel fake and unrealistic. So here, the swing is happening to the left of the screen. Pan the sound to come only mostly into the left side of your ear. We're really close, so it was louder. And then it transitions a little further. So the sound is dampened a little bit it's a little more towards the middle. So it's the direction, it's like where the sound is happening around the body. Crappy visuals with good audio still works. Good visuals with crappy audio never works. Man, this is getting long. All right, lighting breakdown. Lighting breakdown of 111, 212 looks mad high budget. 
judging by your BTS, just warp some magic. Definitely not high budget, definitely low budget lighting setup. Uh, let me just break those scenes down for you super, super quick. This is the first scene that he highlighted, just using natural daylight, backlighting our character here. And then what we're doing is using a giant four by four Matthews uh, bounce, bouncing that light from the same side that the sun is actually on, just to wrap it slightly around his face. You can actually see the bounce in his eye right there. And then it's just a good looking frame. A lot of uh, contrasting layers. You got his shoulder in the foreground with a red color, mixing with blue, orange. His face is in the mid ground. You got his bat behind him. In the background, you have the sky in the background. So there's a lot of layers to this image. Not a whole lot to it. It's like super simple. It's just like a piece of cloth uh, at night. I wanted to make sure when we got the close up in his face, there's still a little bit of light in the sky so we would get this depth. If this was all dark black sky, it wouldn't look as good. Ended up not looking as good later in the film. To get this nice shadow, we had a big black four x four neg trying to block the light from the stadium lights from hitting this side of his body. And then we took one of those lightsaber tube lights from Namlight and just put it in to the side here to light the side of him. You can actually see it in his eye. And then he, again, he's being backlit uh, by the stadium lights. Next from Troy, I uh, love a lighting breakdown. Uh, it was actually just Troy's birthday. Happy birthday, Troy. I know that because his, his wonderful wife reached out and told me. Our, our lamp right here is our motivating light source. So we're building everything off of that, exposing for this lamp so it's not overblown. Have a aperture light keying from this side, giving a nice backlight. That's the orange light that you're seeing from here, the orange light you're seeing on the bed being spilled. Put a little aperture MC red color here just to give a little texture, a little different color. Threw some books on the desk, threw some baseballs on the desk just to give it a little more prop design. Dressed up the room, bought these blinds, Bought these orange pillows for color separation. Brightness on the phone is turned all the way up, so we're getting a little bit of key from the actual phone itself. Then I have our production assistant, Anthony, standing over top of Marley with the tube light facing straight down with a blue color, kind of giving it some color separation, brightening up the whole scene in general, making it kind of look like there's moonlight spilling in. That's it for lighting. Uh, and then last question, Jared. Uh, how the hell do I work for you? Jared, if I have one piece of advice for you, you don't want to ever work for anyone. You don't want to work for me. The goal is to work for yourself, have complete agency in your life. Like, that was my goal. That's what I set out to do. That's where I'm getting at. You'll never be happy working for someone else. So, even me, definitely going to make more things like this in the future. Um, yeah, so happy to have you. Go check out the music bed link. They're supporting me which is helping support you, so might as well support them. Circle of life thing. See you next time. Love you. Bye. Ah, oh, sweating. Look at this. Look at this.